Hello friends I am Suman Sarab mechanical engineer and today I am going to discuss about one of the important topics of mechanics that is inertia so before going to understand about inertia let me speak what is need to know about inertia actually whenever we require to provide some acceleration to the bodies then how much amount of force will be required is finding by the help of inertia so we have to understand inertia uh, inertia yes so now before going to tell about inertia i would like to inform you some basic term which will be come during understanding inertia okay so the first term is newton first law i do believe that you you students must have idea about newton first law of motion although i would like to inform you newton sir has given us three laws of motion and out of those three laws motion i would uh, here i would like to discuss about the first one that is newton first law in the newton first law what newton said had said that for a particle if the total resultant force on that particle is zero okay if the total resultant force of the particle is zero then the acceleration of that body must be zero okay there will not be any unbalanced forces then after the then after only the resultant force will be zero and acceleration of that particle will be zero so students are easily uh, getting that if acceleration is zero then body will either in the rest or either in the uniform linear velocity students are getting easily that body will be in rest but they are getting lots of difficulty during understanding how a particle will be in linear velocity uniform linear velocity when the particle particles acceleration is zero and there is no any force acting on that very particle so it is very important concept let me inform suppose this is the uniform linear this is the linear path and the uniform velocity that is at this place the velocity let me let me do something the velocity here is 2 meter per second and here the velocity is 2 meter per second and in this whole period the velocity is going to the same that velocity is uniform so as i informed as you people have idea that acceleration is change of velocity upon change upon time so here the velocity is going to going to be same here the velocity is going to be same so acceleration must be zero so i can say that even you can see that anyone can say that that yes if that body has uniform linear acceleration then then acceleration will be zero and the resultant force will be zero okay hope you students have got it and if you want to understand this concept that how acceleration is equal to change of velocity upon change of time so you may visit my uh, first lecture in which i have uh, explained properly okay so in the next topic next next point that is newton second law as i have discussed about newton first law now it is term to understand what is newton second law actually in the first law i have discussed that if the first if the particle has experienced zero resultant force then acceleration will be zero but here in the newton second law newton second law newton second law if the particle has resultant force is not equal to zero i mean there must be that particle must uh, that particle must feel some unbalanced force then acceleration of the particle must not be zero i mean that particle must have some acceleration that should not be equal to zero okay and the mathematical term mathematical term of this second law of motion is force equal to mass into acceleration so 
now it is term to inform that we have discussed two point yet that is that is newton second law and newton first law of motion so let me inform whatever we have discussed yet it is the part of inertial frame only we can't apply the same laws of motion in non inertial frame now the two term has come now the two terms have come that is inertial frame and non inertial frame so let me speak about inertial frame basically uh, it is very small thing let me speak but without knowing it is not a small thing so let me inform R if the reference frame is in the rest then the frame is considered as inertial frame now there is a big question that what is reference frame and how it is in the rest and uh, okay so let me speak uh, sup uh, suppose yes you, uh, you suppose what right now you must be in the room in your room and what is happening there you were doing something and suppose you are the particle okay you are the particle and the study of motion is uh, on you okay now whatever we will study that uh, we, that study must be at on you okay and the room in which you are right now that room must be in the rest that move that, uh, and um, that room cannot be moved na okay so that room is considered as reference frame if that reference frame is in the rest then you have to say that is the inertial frame okay then after you can apply those two equations of motion that is newton first law of motion newton second laws of motion okay hope you have understood so now let me inform what is the non inertial non inertial frame okay so if the in reference frame is in the state of motion then this then only the frame is considered a non inertial frame okay so what i said that reference frame is in the state of motion that again i will take the same example uh, sub uh, nahi i will take the different examination uh, example if the reference frame suppose you are the uh, you are in the bus and the study of motion and my study is focused on your motion i mean you are my particle and the bus in which you are that bus is running okay if that bus is running then that is reference frame for you and that frame that bus reference frame is known as non inertial frame okay now i'm going to give an example that suppose you uh, there is a mass this is on this absolutely smooth surface i mean there is no uh, friction at all and there is a bachcha <laughs> there is a bachcha who is running this bus i mean this is a 18 plus not a bachcha otherwise there must be <laughs> some fr so let it be this is apart from the topic ha huh. so this uh, in the initial position this bus is in the rest and if 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 in the rest position if we want to start uh, start a study on this mass particle then we can apply the newton first law second law no problem at all but as soon as this bu bus will start acceleration uh, start uh, moving then what will happen do you know that particle must experiences some forces sorry some acceleration in the opposite direction of this uh, acceleration this acceleration must uh, may or may not be different this is the different part of study i'm not going to discuss about that okay so this is the acceleration so what i want to say whether whether we ha have we, have we applied any forces on this very particle no not at all without applying forces this particle is getting acceleration a not how <laughs> just because non inertial frame and one of the best thing i am going to tell you that in non inertial frame without applying forces but object or particle may get acceleration so this is the biggest issue and this thing is this thing i'll uh, cover in uh, cover later on in the next session so 
because our study on the inertial frame uh, because we are studying inertia so i hope you guys have understood this term this thing whatever i have said okay now i'm going to inform and what what is happening actually many students are saying that when body will a bus will start moving here then there will be a force which acts on this body but my dear friend and when student when students are being asked what type of force is being uh, applied on this body then is what students applying sir inertia inertia force is acting in this direction but my dear friend uh, friends there is no such forces like inertia inertia is basically a property it is not it is not the force it is not the force it is the property of that particle only okay this is that is the ek second yaar ye kya ho raha hai the uh, inertia is basically the property of this that particle only okay so basically the unwillingness to change the state of motion itself is known as inertia if any body doesn't want to change its position its position doesn't want to change its position or unwilling to change they don't want to change basically simply resistance to change the state okay they are not they don't want to change that's it okay so this type of uh, is called this thing of that particle is called inertia resistance to change the state that's it so if the resistance is high resistance of that body is high the inertia is definitely high or if resist so we can write resistance to change is directly proportional to inertia because what unwilling to change is it means what resistance to change ओके चेंज करने से अपने आप को रजिस्ट करता है दैट इज द इनर्सिया दैट इज रजिस्टेंस टू चेंज इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू इनर्सिया सो नाउ लेट मी गो टू द अनदर पेज ओके सॉरी हियर इज देयर इन मेनी बुक व्हाट स्टूडेंट्स आर गेटिंग दैट मास इज द मेजर ऑफ इनर्सिया मास इज द मेजर ऑफ इनर्सिया हियर मास इज द मेजर ऑफ so let me give an example by the example you can automatically understand how mass is be, mass is going to be the one of the important fact of inertia so suppose i have taken two example uh, two particle having a mass 1 kg lighter weight and this is the heavier uh, second mass uh, is heavier than other that is 10 kg and i have applied the same magnitude of force that is 10 newton on both of the bodies so by the help of newton second law of mathematical expression ex acceleration is equal to force upon mass so acceleration is equal to what 10 meter per second square we can find it because we have force and mass in the same way we have got the acceleration of this particle is 1 meter per second now let me find the velocity of this lighter object and the heavier object a heavier object with with reference to time the velocity with uh, of this lighter object in 1 second will be 10 meter per second because we know acceleration is equal to v by t so velocity is equal to acceleration into time so velocity of the lighter object in second second is equal to 20 meter per second velocity of the 1 uh, kg object in third second is 30 meter per second at the same time at the same time this heavier object has the velocity in the first second is 1 meter per second because we have acceleration and we have time so by the help of this two term i have got velocity of this heavier particle is 1 meter per second okay and the velocity of the same heavier particle in two sec uh, second second is 2 meter per second and the velocity of this the same heavier particle in third second is 3 meter per second so what we have seen here that rate of change of velocity of the ma of the lighter object rate of change of velocity of the lighter object is greater than the velocity of the heavier object here jis rate se well lighter object i mean halke object ki velocity change ho rahi hai i mean velocity change ho rahi hai means kya resistance kam laga rahi hai na and the way this heavier body is resisting itself with respect to time 
you can easily see that one meter per second, two meter second, three meter second. So I can say that lesser, uh, I mean, uh, lighter body has less resistance to change, while heavier body has higher resistance to change. So I can say that in the last I have told that. Wait, 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 let me, let me search, let me search. Where is it? In the last, uh, I have told you that resistance to change is directly proportional to inertia. In the same way, in the same way, I can say that, uh, so I have written here, resistance of particle to change is directly proportional to inertia and in the last section here less resistance has less mass and high resistance have high mass so basically you know, the particle whose mass is higher has high inertia so mass of particle is directly proportional to inertia hope you guys have understood the importance of inertia and what is inertia and what is the use of inertia and how it is being used for the motion of particles in the next session, I will discuss about mass moment of inertia. Okay. Guys, if you feel this channel's videos are worth watching, please subscribe and share. Thank you and stay tuned.